This project is going to be based around a map view, asking users to add places to the map they want to visit. To make this work, we can't just embed a simple MK map view in SwiftUI and hope for the best. We have to track the center coordinate, whether or not they're viewing place details, what annotations they have, and more. So we're going to start with a basic MK map view wrapper that has a coordinator, then quickly add some extras onto it so it becomes more useful. Create a new Swift UI view called Map View. Add an import for MapKit, then give it this code. I'll conform to UI view representable. Func make UI view, context context returns MK Map View. Let Map View equals MK Map View. Map view dot delegate equals context dot coordinator return Map View. Then func update UI view underscore view, mk map view, context context, and I'll leave that thing empty. Func make coordinator, returns coordinator, coordinator self, class coordinator, inherits from NS object, conforms to mk map view delegate, var parent, map view, init underscore parent, map view, self dot parent equals parent. There's nothing special in there, so let's change that immediately by making the map keep track of its center coordinate. As we looked at previously, this means implementing the map view did change visible region method in our coordinator. But this time, we're going to pass that data up to the map view struct, so we can use add binding to store the value somewhere else. So the coordinator will receive the value from mapkit and pass it up to the map view. That map view puts the value in an app binding property, which means it's actually being stored somewhere else. We've made a little chain that connects MK map view to whatever Swift UI view is embedding the map. So start by adding this property to map view. Add binding, var center coordinate, CL location coordinate 2D. That will immediately break the map view preview struct because it needs to provide a binding. This preview isn't really useful because MK map view doesn't work outside of the simulator. So I wouldn't blame you if you just deleted it. However, if you really want to make it work, you should add some example data to MK point annotation so it's easy to reference. Extension MK point annotation. Static var example MK point annotation. Let annotation equals MK point annotation. Annotation dot title equals London. Annotation dot subtitle equals home to the 2012 Summer Olympics. Annotation dot coordinate equals CL location coordinate 2D. Latitude 51.5. Longitude, minus 0.13, return annotation. With that in place, it's easy to fix map view previews because we can just use that example annotation. Center coordinate, dot constant, mk point annotation, dot example, dot coordinate. We're going to add more to that in just a moment, but first I want to put it into content view. In this app, users are going to be adding places to a map they want to visit, and we'll represent that with a full screen map view and a translucent circle on top to represent the center point. Although this view will have a binding to track the center coordinate, we don't have to use that to place a circle. A simple Z stack will make sure the circle always stays in the center of the map. First, add an extra import line so we get access to MapKit's data types. Import MapKit. Second, add a property inside content view that will store the current center coordinate of the map. Later on, we'll use this to add a place mark. At state, private var, center coordinate, equals CL location coordinate 2D. And now we can fill in the body property. Z stack, map view, center coordinate, dollar center coordinate, dot edges ignoring safe area, dot all, then a circle with a blue fill at 30% opacity with a 32 by 32 frame. If you're on the app now, You'll see you can move the map around freely, but there's always a blue circle showing exactly where the center is. Although our blue dot will always be fixed at the center of the map, we still want content view to have its center coordinate property updated as the map moves around. We've connected it to map view, but we still have to implement the map view did change visible region method in the map view's coordinator to kick off that whole chain. So add this method to the coordinator class of map view. Func map view did change visible region underscore map view mk map view parent dot center coordinate equals map view dot center coordinate all this work by itself isn't terribly interesting so the next step is to add a button to the bottom right corner that lets us add place marks to the map we're already inside a z stack 
So the easiest way to align this button is to place it inside a V stack and a H stack with spaces before each time. Both of those spaces end up occupying the full vertical and horizontal space that's left over, making whatever comes at the end sit comfortably in the bottom right corner. We'll add some functionality for the button soon, but first let's get it in place and add some basic styling to make it look good. Please add this V stack below the circle. V stack, spacer, H stack, spacer, button with the action of a comment saying create a new location. Of the contents, we'll say image from SF symbols plus. With some padding, and I try and do some black background color, a white foreground color, a nice large title font, a circular shape, and some extra padding. Now notice how I added the padding modifier twice there. Once is to make sure the button's bigger before we add a background color, and the second time to push it away from the trailing edge. Where things get interesting is how we place pins on the map. We've bound the center coordinate of the map to a property in our map view, but now we need to send data the other way. We have to make an array of locations in content view and send those to the MK map view to be displayed. Solving this is best done by breaking the problem down into several smaller, simpler parts. The first part is obvious. We need an array of locations in content view, which stores all the places the user wants to visit. So start by adding this property to content view. At state, private var, locations equals an array of MK point annotation. Next, we want to add a location to that whenever the plus button is tapped. We aren't going to add a title and subtitle yet. So for now, this is just as simple as creating an MK point annotation using the current value of center coordinate. So replace the create a new location comment with this. Let new location equals MK point annotation, new location dot coordinate equals self dot center coordinate, self dot locations dot append, new location. Now for the challenging part. How can we synchronize that with the map view? Remember, we don't want content view to even know that map kit's being used. We want to isolate all that functionality inside map view so we keep our Swift UI code nice and clean. This is where update UI view comes in. Swift UI will automatically call it when any of the values being sent into the UI view representable struct have changed. This method is then responsible for synchronizing both the view and its coordinator to the latest configuration from the parent view. In our case, we're sending the center coordinate binding into map view, which means every time the user moves the map, that value changes, which in turn means update UI view is being called all the time. This has been happening quietly all this time because update UI view is empty. But if you add a simple print call in there, you'll see it come to life. I'll do print updating. Now, as you move the map around, you'll see updating printing again and again. Anyway, all this matters because we can also pass into map view the locations array we just made and have it use that array to insert annotations for us. So start by adding this new property to map view to hold all the locations we'll pass to it. Var annotations, an array of MK point annotation. Second, we need to update map view previews so it sends in our example annotation. Although again, I wouldn't blame you if you had already deleted the preview because it really isn't useful at this time. Anyway, if you still have it, then adjust it to this. Annotations, array of MK point annotation dot example. Third, we have to implement update UI view inside map view. So it compares the current annotations to the latest annotations. And if they aren't the same, then it replaces them. Now we could compare each item in the annotations to see whether they're the same, but there isn't any point. We can't add and remove items at the same time. So all we need to do is check whether the two arrays contain the same number of items. And if they don't, remove all existing annotations and add them again. So replace your current update UI view method with this. If annotations.count is not equal to view.annotations.count. Then view.remove annotations, view.annotations, view.add annotations, annotations. Finally, update content view so it sends in the locations array to be converted into annotations. Annotations, locations. That's enough map work for now, so go ahead and run your app again. You should be able to move around as much as you need, then press the plus button to add pins. 
One thing you might notice is how iOS automatically coalesces pins when they're placed close together. For example, if you place a few pins in a one kilometer region, then zoom out, iOS will hide some of them to avoid making the map hard to read.